Hey everybody, welcome to episode 66 of the Patio Slave podcast experience, listening experience, whatever you want to call it. We are here, episode 66, Nate Tone. What's going on, guys? You guys good? Yo, yo. I'm, I'm great, man. This is a fun night. Yeah, I like the way you framed that, Twan. It's the fully immersive nerdery experience is what it is. Well, I mean, we're, we're kind of a podcast. We're a blog. We're lifetime sentence music <laughs> nerds. Like, yeah. it's, it's everything. Whatever you want it to be. Production company, let's go. We yeah we, we we do all of it right. I mean, if you if you <laughs> peek behind the curtain, we're it's just the three of us. <laughs> so <laughs> we're doing it all, baby. Yeah. So we're back, sixty six, uh, Route sixty six episode, and we had a fantastic guest. This is not original content. This is someone that we had a blast chalking it up with for the last hour and a half. So who do we have, guys? We had Brian Sinnott of the Distillers. He was in Angels and Airwaves. The Innocence, huge legacy in the music industry since he was like, I think in his early 20s, right? Yeah, he's been, I mean, he talked about it in our, our conversation. He's been uh, at it for quite some time, even before that, but uh, properly in the music industry for at least the last 20, 22 years or so. So yeah, uh, a yeah. really fun conversation. We hope you guys dig it. This is it right here. Our conversation with Ryan Sinnott of The Distillers. If you like what you hear tonight, please go check us out on the social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter at Patio Slave. Email us at PatioSlavePodcast at gmail.com. And go back and check out our other interviews. We've had Scott Russo of Unwritten Law. We've had Greg Bergdorf of Zebrahead. Chad Neptune from Further Seems Forever, among many other great guests. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Ryan, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate yeah. you coming on today. And uh, I, don't know if you know this, I don't know if you know the story, but... Uh, the reason I actually wanted to reach out to you is we did a segment. What was it, Tone? 60-something? We did a segment. Uh, oh, what? Now, you get on the spot. Now I don't know. Episode <clears throat> like 61. Me. Yeah, 61 or two. It was a cover songs. Uh, we were talking. We, we picked some classic songs, and uh, Nate had you guys, the distillers, as a uh, a song that he would like to hear you cover. So, Nate, go ahead. Yeah, it's basically like bands. Like, what bands would you want to see cover a song? Like fill in the blank. So I put the Distillers covering "You Ought to Know" by Alanis Morissette. Just I feel like that would be just kick ass. Like the way you guys, your tempo and everything. And uh, um, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. I see, I see over the map. I see wheels turning right now. Yeah, there was. Yeah, I don't know which wheels were turning. That's an odd one. No, I, I'm, I'm hearing it in my head. I'm trying to remember the intricacies of the song. I, I couldn't see that happening ever. But no diss at all to awesome. anybody. But I just don't think that's that would be our flavor. And it's just that you, 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 I think that's the part that loses me, honestly. Yeah. I think everything else would be cool. And as minute I heard that, I don't think I could keep playing. <laughs> All right. You know what's great? Well, we told, well, we pitched yeah, this like as the like record. a way to, to start this. We were like, I hope he goes one way or the other. Like, I love that idea. I don't think so, man. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> great either way. <laughs> yeah, what's the politest way to say fuck no? <laughs> uh, no, just say fuck no. <laughs> It was either I hate that idea or I'm going to band practice and we're playing it. Yeah, exactly. Very it's polarizing. funny because I've defended that album because I think it's a great album. Like when you listen to it, it just, I mean, it's one of those background music ones for me. I'll be working in the yard. It just kind of puts you in a good mood. You're like, yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, as far as like, it does not make me want to like, oh, I want to put on the guitar and play along. <laughs> no, it doesn't have that. <laughs> Well, the reason it came up is because we were thinking about like our, we always talk about like our roots on the podcast, like the music we grew up with the nineties. So Alanis Morissette was definitely in the background with everything else we kind of checked out. So we wanted to know, or I wanted to know like, what was your, what was the kind of music you were getting into at a young age? I'm nineties kid, man. Um, nice. Like yep. from, well, the first punk album I bought was shit. No effects. S M N S N M airlines. It was the first punk album I bought. It wasn't the first one I had. I traded a Depe Depeche Mode Violator for a Bad Brains album when I was in sixth or seventh grade. A little tape. The first one, yeah, No Effects. That one was kind of where I branched away from what my friends were listening to. Like my Bad Brains and like kind of like Slayer and those kind of stuff that kind of just happened, Guns and Roses, that kind of everybody knew about. Yeah. Then you'd find your own little niche. And that was the one for me where I was kind of like, man, my friends are listening to what's just on the radio. I want to find some cool shit. And then, um, but like growing up, yeah, that 90s stuff, man, all the grunge, like, and every band was huge. So what are you going to do? Were there any other trades you did? Trades. Well, you said you traded Depeche Mode for 
Pat oh, uh, no, I'm thinking trades. Well, I can weld. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, I can't weld, but uh, n- uh, trades, man. No, it was that. Fuck what the Columbia was it? Columbia House, whatever the oh, yeah. fucking. Oh, you yeah. get twelve for a penny. <laughs> Yep. Man, fifth grade hit and who man, we caused some damage. <laughs> but then yeah, like that I think that was like a two year process of just okay, new name, same address, twelve new CDs. This one sucks. I'll trade for whatever, but I don't I can't remember. I mean public enemy, primus, color me bad. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Uh, they, those all came from that that trade. Um I mean from that magazine or the magazine poll. Uh but man. Man, yeah, sorry, just thinking about like music that back, what was I listening to back then? And it's like the same stuff I listen to now. So I guess Yeah. We can relate. Damn, you you're just yeah. like us. <laughs> yeah, if it was if it if Thrasher magazine talked about it, if it was in a skate video, if it was in Plan B's virtual reality, I, I had to have that album. Yeah, the skateboarding and <laughs> and twelve for a penny. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I mean, we've we've brought that up numerous times where it's like, okay, I'm gonna just rip through and pull ones that look cool and maybe yeah. it was an album art thing you were like that looks awesome i think that's gonna be great i'm, I'm in and then i you love when that happens great. yeah exactly i got a, a mighty diamonds album because i like the cover at goodwill never listened to it it was on my wall for a long time i just thought it was cool looking Hell three yeah. dudes wearing like no shirt wearing gold chains like this is awesome <laughs> and then a friend of mine's like oh they're, they're a great band and i'm like get the fuck out of here really i put it on and i'm like i had no clue no clue who they were, no clue of the history. And, but yeah, I mean, it took me a while, but that, you know, that's fun. Cause then that leads to a whole new, ah, that got me into a lot of reggae that before I was like, yeah, not my thing. So fifth grade, you know, like probably 12, are you checking out live music at that point or did that come later? No, my first concert was seventh grade. Uh, Tiffany Thompson had asked me to, uh, Paula Abdul would color me bad opening. No, I think Paula Abdul was opening for color me bad. Um, I had an A's parka, so I was set for the night. Our legs touched the entire show. We <laughs> held hands on the way back to her mom's car. Success. Uh, that's a great night right there. In seventh grade, does it get any better than that? I don't know. Oh, think man. Jeez, I'd kill for a um, night like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, my first live, man, um, no, we kind of did it ourselves. We'd have, like, Punk in the Park. We uh, used to be able, we figured out that you could apply for a permit at the, um, through the city office to rent out uh, this area, it's the uh, park was off this little canyon and uh we'd make it a private event so when the cops would show up be like sorry you can't come in it's a private event and it worked so we figured that out and then yeah every summer we'd pull the generator out and get a you know roster of local bands and do that and then that led up i mean the bay area had a great punk scene that i was lucky enough to be involved with i mean gilman street and you know everything was happening in like oakland and uh berkeley at the time um and that was kind of like my live stuff berkeley square gilman street Back when, man, Jack of Orkin and Suicide Machines, Rudimentary, not Rudimentary, you know, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, well, another band, but I'm sure they were there too. Hell yeah. So you you said Punk in the Park, so you, you were actually playing those gigs. Uh, yeah, I had a, I was, yeah, 13, 14, little punk band called the School Bus Junkies. Um, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, awesome. There were some other bands like from Fremont that I, you know, surprised that they kind of never... It was kind of like for me, there is going to that and then a little blip and then into the punk scene. And it's kind of those bands never made the tra- transition. And I thought they would have. But we used to play a little, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it, the pizza place in town. We kind of, you know, find the places where the owners are cool and be like, hey, can we set up some amps here and put on a show? We tried that out. But so was that, that, that was my live experience. <laughs> that was your first, your first band that you were in that like the first time you were playing shows was, was with that band? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there was. It was kind of more of like we want. We didn't have shows. No shows came through Fremont. You know, Santa Cruz. Kind of, you'd see some stuff, but like the same kind of local thing that you stumble into a bar or a pizza place. That you know, or um, well, there's like the crate place in uh, in Santa Cruz. It's that place is awesome for food, and they have good shows there. But it's a weird association of the two things. Looking in there, you wouldn't really. You know, you go in there and have some great food and the nice patio with all this greenery. You don't think punk shows, but hey, it happens. And that was, yeah, we didn't have shows coming through, so we made our own until uh, I was a little bit older, figured out the public transit system and could get around to the next cities and see what <laughs> nice. was going on in there, you know? That, that's the cool thing about punk, I think. The more I do this, the more we do this as a uh, as a group, <clears throat> learning that it kind of can be whatever you want it to be and be wherever you want it to be, right? It just yeah. as long as you got the people and, and you can figure out a way to do it, it can be anywhere. Exactly. It's yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I mean, it was skateboarding and punk rock and 
there was, I mean, those are the primaries, I guess, but there, there was so much involved that it was all, you know, didn't matter who you were, where you were, what you were into, get on a skateboard and, you know, turn the stereo up. Cool. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> Thanks. We can relate with everything you're saying, except for the actual playing music thing, but the whole nineties vibe that you're talking about where it's just like anything goes, it's pretty yeah, chill. Everything's it. pretty cheap. Yeah, I miss it. I'm looking forward to it. I was, we were having a conversation. Who was I talking? I was talking with somebody and I said, I'm calling it because I can feel it in the air, man. Like, like, uh, starter jackets are going to be back next winter. Yeah. I was calling that because like you start looking around and like, who is it? Uh, RZA and Ghostface are making a new album, uh, hieroglyphics. I'm seeing some action with them. Nice. Um, public enemy. I mean, they're always their last album. I mean, but that like, there's something about I can only describe it like as in skateboarding it was normal, but you don't see those mix up of concerts anymore. Where it's like I mean, remember when Dr. Dre was on Lollapalooza? Right. You know, like I kind of feel like there's a little bit of that mixing happening again, and that makes me really excited. I'm waiting like, like Ra a new Rage Against the Machine album is all we need, and it's like, oh, it's on, oh, we're back. Oh, Let's do it. oh man, uh, you speak in our language. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it could happen. It could. I'm feeling it, man. It's everybody. There's like that. Everybody got so mad and so angry. And it's almost like nature said, all right, everybody back into the corner. You know, let's think about what we've done. And yep. Now it's kind of like, OK, you know, we, we we spent our time. Let's let's have fun again. Let's get creative and enjoy each other instead of everybody. So uh, you, you know, I, I you're absolutely right. I'm seeing more of that with what I do every day on a day to day basis. Like for a long time, we couldn't be around each other at my job. And now, like today. I had to have seen a couple hundred people scattered across the, the place that I work outside watching uh, athletics and be like, wow, like it's back. Like people are excited. People are cheering. They're high fiving. They're hanging out. Like people are happy again. Like it's, it, you're starting to see it. We're coming out of yeah. that cave. Oh, I love it. I've, I've never had so many, Hey, how you doing today? So while I'm out walking around the, you <laughs> yep. know, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's like, where were you last year? What the hell were yeah. you? <laughs> We're all hiding. We're all hiding inside. Mm, we all had to put our dunce caps on, go sit in the corner, and <laughs> say, our, say our sorries. Yeah. So, Ryan, those early, like the punk in the park stuff, are you, you started playing guitar first, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I my first instrument, uh, there was a piano in my house growing up, but my first instrument was saxophone. And then uh, that was too. Sh somewhat short-lived. I wanted to play drums, but I had to take lessons first. And I don't know if you ever take drum lessons, but that sucks. Because you don't play drums, <laughs> play a little pad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. You got to, you know, get all your foundation. And then, uh, yeah, so I took drum lessons for a year, and then my dad saw the price of a drum set, and I started playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I, he got me a, a little guitar and a small little amp, and then my first job was at a guitar shop. And kind of from there, I learned as much as I could about everything. But yeah, I played guitar for 12 or 13 years, started playing bass uh, to audition for the distillers. Okay, that was our next question. You, uh, you came to bass late, later, obviously, than, than what you'd been doing musically. So it was to uh, audition for the, the distillers that you started playing bass around that time. Yep. Yeah, I was living in San Francisco and working at a record store, um, Access Records in Alameda. And uh, um, Andy, it's a kind of a mutual friend story. Um, but yeah, he had contacted me asking if I was interested and I said, no, I don't play bass. I could think of 10 people off the top of my head to be better. And the next day at work, uh, I was talking to my boss about it and he's like, you're an idiot. Call him back. I mean, what, you know, when they say no, then I'll see you on Monday. But like, so I was like, okay. And, and yeah, I borrowed a bass and an amp from a friend of mine, locked myself in my room for four days, learned the first album and went and auditioned. Uh, yeah. When I emailed him, he's like, oh, we're, we're practicing on Thursday. So learn as much as you can. I'll see you there. Wow. So yeah, I learned as much as I could on that and um, went and auditioned and then they came into work the next day and I was like, oh, rad, hey, leader boss. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you say you locked yourself in a room and, and learned the first record, are you just listening to the record and then just trying to pick out the bass parts and play them yourself? No, yeah, I, I'm, I'm uh, literal in that. I, um, I lived uh, with my roommate and was just kind of, you know, come out. I remember coming out in the kitchen, making mac and cheese you know something uh, living uh, living on the cheap and making it quick you know and then right back into that room record on repeat um i was also learning um uh what was i, I was hooked on uh pat benatar i'm trying to think of the album the one with all the hits um and a lot of joan jett heartbreaker sorry pat benatar's heartbreaker album just uh not any relation to it but just trying to pick up a new instrument trying to find different tempo things that i don't normally play styles i don't normally play and Pat Benatar particularly 
is one of those ones like Beastie Boy Sabotage. You listen to it and you think it's so simple and then you try and learn it and you're like, oh, whoa, there's a lot going on here I wasn't mm. thinking about. And I think those two help because the first Distillers album, uh, Kim, who played on, uh, who recorded that, uh, she doesn't use a pick. And for a guitar player to then pick up bass and <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. So to try and, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, I can either try and match her pattern or her style and rhythmic uh, patterns, um, but it just didn't never felt right. So I kind of had to like, what's my style. Mm -hmm. And so that's what led me to kind of like, well, what if I played like, like this and what, and you know, so yeah, a lot of Joan Jett, oh, Kate Bush too. I was listening to a lot of Kate Bush and trying to pick out that. Cause that's just, I mean, there's no tempo or rhythm. It kind of seems like a, like playing along to someone explaining a dream. <laughs> so question for you, like the distillers that we know in 2021, wasn't the distillers that you auditioned for naturally because it was you know 20 year difference like did, were you a fan of the of the band at that point yeah i had first seen that yeah i had saw them um the i think the first show that i saw them was in, in sacramento with uh, nerve agents tiger army and afi or might have been death by stereo I, I can't remember there was like a while where there was there was probably 10 bands that always seemed to be playing together um and it, it was there's there more than you know just those but uh it opened up to a lot of, you know, a lot of bands like um, got exposed just through that scene. And that's where I, yeah, that's where I saw them. Nerve Agents, I was a huge fan of theirs. Um, when Andy started playing with the Distillers, um, that, that was kind of, I mean, it was cool but, and very quick because that was, I mean, for me, it was like, oh, whoa, oh, that's rad that he's doing. Oh, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll be there on Thursday. It was kind of, you know, kind of <laughs> like that. But no, I saw him up in Sacramento and I, I was kind of, it was a trip because the first thing that at the time, it was three women out front. And it was so gnarly and aggressive. And it was kind of, it was like, whoa, this is rad. Cause you don't, you know, see bands quite often that have uh, one or two females, and, you know, and, and but just to see up front that visual when on a very heavy handed, like kind of hardcore bill. And it's just like, you know, I, I heard it before I saw them. And it's one of those like, whoa, this is rad. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's like with, like with any of the bands exposed at that time, cause uh, you'd go to see like, uh, you go to a nerve agent show and then you're like, Oh, Whoa, scissor hands. They're cool. You know? And I'm kind of drawn a blank, like the vets hall. I saw so many bands there that, uh, first time I met London may was down there. It was just kind of, you run into different people and you see different things and it kind of becomes, uh, that like, Oh, I can't think of the right word. It's like, whatever's new or like what's in front of you is like, Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Oh, this is rad. You just kind of want to, how do I become a part of this? I want to be, I want to be, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. And it kind of just like, one of many bands that struck me that way. Yeah, I was going to say, Ryan, you were talking about the grunge scene that you grew up with. I mean, we did too. We were in that in that pretty deep. So this scene up in the Bay Area with Distillers, similar situation. You're basically in the in the right place at the right time, but you're also kind of part of like the network, whether whether it's like the record store, or just going to the gigs and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I was more just just a, I mean, I guess a scene kid. I didn't really yeah. know anybody. Um, I. Like me and some of the guys I skated with and high school friends started going to shows. And then I moved away for a few years, moved up to Tahoe, snowboarded. And then when I kind of, when I moved back, it's a little bit different of a town than I moved away from and kind of went back in the music scene and going to those shows. And yeah, the network kind of grew, but I was just like, like I said, I was so like in awe of just everything. Whoa, this is rad. This is rad. I get along with people. I'm learning new stuff. I'm meeting a lot of people who have the same interests. It just kind of feels like this is my tribe, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted, you know, how, how do I wanted to be there? I wanted to help out. And so just from things of like offering to help load gear, you know, and band, you know, if you see another band member, another art, I mean, we're all artists trying to do art. So let's help each other kind of an idea. And that was kind of reciprocated. And I think that kind of, you know, that's why I'm still friends with the people that I met then. I guess, you know, 20 years later. And I mean, it's hard to keep your close friends close and as an adult, but still talking to the same people and that I met through that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's ahead. us. Yeah. Us. That's, we're a, that's the same us. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the three of us. We've known each other since we were, geez, I've known Anthony for close to 30 years. I've known Nate for 20, but like we were friends as adults too. And we're still friends doing this now. So it is hard to do that right. and, and be able to be doing something like you say, pulling towards the same goal wanting to be part of that that scene uh it's that's why we started this we wanted to talk to people that were part of that scene and were, were part of uh you know the world that we've spent so much time listening to and and dissecting and being a part of ourselves on the outside we want to start talking to those people on the inside so that's that's how you ended up here yay <laughs> 
it's cool yeah it's like um i hadn't seen shirley manson uh garbage in many many years and she said no no one else had, had put it this way but she like after you know catching up everything and oh so good to see you and she's like how the fuck did we get so lucky how did we make it and it's kind of i mean you can think of it in the terms of bands or whatever but it's kind of like yeah as adults and with your friends it's kind of like with the people that you're still close to that you still catch up with yeah i, I kind of think about that when i catch up with some friends it's like man, how did we get lucky you know, we, how are we, we're the lucky ones that still get to talk to each other. Absolutely. So many people drift off, you know, but that's cool. I like that. So you, you join the band, you're playing probably regionally and maybe expanding out. And then it comes the time to what ends up being what Sing Sing Death House. That's the first album you're on. How soon after, like, does that come right away? And like, how cool is that to be, to join a, a band that's on Hellcat? Like that must've been pretty cool. It was yeah, it, it was it was very, very awesome. Very awesome. It's hard for me to describe those things because for me, not like in a, hey, check out my book and I'm the shit. Not like that, but it just, it felt natural and right and where I'm supposed to be. It just, I, I don't know how to describe it other than like when I'm when I'm not doing band stuff, I don't really know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like, it, But when I'm in that, it's like, it like clicks and it's like, oh, okay, I know what I'm, this is where I'm supposed to be. I know what to do here. Where everything else is, I'm, I'm uh huh, what? And, uh. It, it was, I mean, really fucking awesome in the sense of obviously, yeah, you're in a, um, from trying for years and years and years to now you're in a professional band and this is your job, mm -hmm. you know, and which is every, I mean, fuck, the first time I heard Guns N' Roses, that first Sweet Child of Mine intro, it's just like, whoa, I want to do that, yeah. <laughs> you know, so like <laughs> to finally getting that, that moment of like, whoa, I, I'm, we're going to record something. I'm going to record music on a record label. This is crazy. I'm in a recording studio. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of craziness that went along with it. But that, I mean, looking back, there's just kind of everything was so fast that there wasn't really a time to process. Even all the way through Coral Fang until the band kind of took that big, long pause. It was just everything was so fast that by the time to sit back and think about it, it was like, whoa, wow, that was four and a half years, huh? Damn, that was quick. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, I think um, from when I joined the band, I want to say it was two months until we recorded Sing Sing Death House. It was pretty quick, but it was um, a lot that just clicked. Like that, like I said, that feeling like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. I mean, went in an audition and we played a few songs. Um, I think we played some old ones and then one new one that they that they were working on. Then we went to grab lunch and next day they're like, yeah, you're in. And it was it hit the floor running. I think I went home for two weeks and packed my bags and shortly after moved to L.A. Yeah. And that was your first, that was your first tour and everything with them. First tour was a uh, warp tour. No way. Nice. 2001. Was two, I think it was 2001 warp tour, 2001. Then, uh, then we did five weeks in Europe with one day off with agnostic front and death threat, three bands on one bus. Ooh, that was I love both of five them. weeks. Wow. <laughs> I, a show every day for five weeks. I think three weeks were in Germany. That was, <laughs> that was fun. Then, uh, God, man, memory. Yeah, we had. Then I can't remember. Man, honestly, there's like it was. Like I said, it was so fast. There's a lot of club shows. A lot of just. Uh, I remember pulling up a lot. You know, we're, shit, we're late and we're here. We're supposed to be on stage in 15 minutes, and we got to unload the van. Let's go. And then boom, boom, boom. And like the clubs pissed at us because we showed up late. And now we got to sell merch out of the trailer. And off, boom. You know, there we go. And we put. I mean, we drove from L.A. Oh, that's what it was. It was sick of it all. The uh, yeah, we went out with uh, Sick of It All and Suicide Machines, and we drove from LA to Connecticut in two days to start that <laughs> tour. Wow! And that was kind of that wasn't a, a rush for us. That was we could have left earlier, but we were like, well, "How long it'll take us to get there?" Okay, because we drove. Uh, Tony and Andy were on day shift. Brody and I were on night shift, and we had a little bed in the back, bunk in the back. Someone would sleep on the bench. Someone in the back, and I would drive. Brody would. We'd chat all night and then fuck, try and catch a few Z's and Tony and Andy would drive during the day. And that's, I mean, fuck, that's all we did. Drive up, yeah. play shows, drive out, grab a hotel, drive, drive, drive. Great yeah. way to see the country. We, we had, um, Greg Bergdorf of Zebrahead fame on a couple weeks ago. He's been on with us a couple of times, but we, we talked all about touring and, uh, you said being on that tour bus with three bands, he told us one of the, the major rules was don't take a dump on the tour bus. So, I, I mean, know. with that many people, you're kind of stuck, right? <laughs> um, you know, I don't think I've ever been on a bus where somebody pooped. I've heard a lot of stories. <laughs> I know that there are 
I know that there are buses that you technically you could, but nobody wants to deal with that. Like it has the capabilities to to yeah. handle it, right. but th- yeah, that smell gonna stay with you. I also know of some artists that have a straight up fifteen or um, bus drivers and be straight up fifteen hundred bucks, and some yeah. artists be like, fine. Solo artist, I might add. <laughs> uh, they just yeah, fifteen hundred dollars a dump, no problem. I ain't stopping. But uh, wow. no, uh, yeah, it's weird how just with any type of traveling, it, you get used to it almost as like your normal life, as if you were to you know have a, a change in jobs and now you're working the night shift. Mm-hmm. You know, the first few weeks, a little bit weird, but uh, I've gotten kind of used to it. To where tour life, you get. You get used to it, man, because my home, I wake up and, you know, I got the morning uh, meeting in the bathroom every morning on schedule, but on tour, oh, it terrifies me. Um, I, I got anxiety a few days up before tour of like what I got to, if I have to wake up in the morning and poop, oh my God, I hate yeah. being the guy to ask the bus driver <laughs> to stop because then everybody knows and they're, yeah. oh, Ryan had to go. That's why we're stopping. <laughs> but no, it never, it's never happened. It's just your body gets used to the change. And yep. although if you're at festivals, pro tip, hit those toilets in the morning. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah i'm sure oh yeah did those uh did that warp tour come to the east coast like when did you guys come on that Pro- yeah probably i was gonna say because we <laughs> we all hit Boston, the mass right? date and i hit the the montreal date and oh you said oh one or oh two mm-hmm. i think it was oh one it was when the, it was the wrestling the mass uh the mass wrestling uh, yep. team that was uh oh one yep yep suffolk downs right suffolk downs and then it was um Park John John Drapeau or something in in Montreal, but that means we probably saw you. I have visions in my head of seeing you guys at Warp Tour, and it was either at one of those dates, probably then. But it was twenty years ago, so who the hell knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. that's the hard one for me. <laughs> and another shows. one is that he was uh, for a brief period the bass player from uh, Nerve Agents. Did when Andy joined, he joined as well. I think he did a, just a handful of tours, maybe one or two even. And um, at the time, our styles were damn near identical. Like, I, he's a little shorter than I am, but for a while, we looked pretty damn the same. And there was a lot of people, oh, man, I remember we hung out, or I saw you here. And I'm like, I didn't, I don't know. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't me. But um, no, but yeah, if it was that warp tour, then yeah, that was fun. That was me. I think they did a, a Canada tour. That's why I associate it with they had a lot of Canadians. Oh, I saw you back in the early when, uh, you know, when you guys first got back to you. I was like, yeah, not, not me. No. <laughs> Unless it's a good story, then I just like, oh yeah, man, how you been? But it's not always like that. <laughs> yeah, people yeah. are mad at me for that from from that time, and I don't know why. They love it. This asshole in, a, in another band, he's a, dude. He's my that... doppelganger. It's not my fault that he did whatever he did. Like, sorry. I've actually had that happen. I'm not going to name names, but I had a guy introduce myself. He's like, dude, we hung out on tour, and it was everybody around was like, oh. Ooh, it made me look real. I was like, fuck, I'm an asshole. And then I went home and like looked up the dates and I was like, motherfucker, that wasn't even me. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Especially that you verified it. You're like, no, man, it wasn't fuck. I mean, now you can sleep at night, which is good. Yeah. I actually didn't ver- I didn't I verified it to myself. <laughs> like yeah. that guy probably still thinks that man, that guy's a fucking ass. <laughs> he used to be cool. Well, hopefully he went home and looked too and said, ah shit, I was wrong. <laughs> Right, I know we're we're gonna have a great hug at some point in the future. <laughs> that wasn't you. You're right. That wasn't me. Ryan, when you guys are driving, and when you're driving, like, you know, split shifts and everything, you and Brody stand up late and stuff like that. Are you guys discussing song ideas and and music like progression stuff like that? Or are you just totally off and just off the clock? Man, we talk. Honestly, it's it's kind of a trip because the only time that we, I mean, we talk music in the sense of, oh, have you heard this band? Oh, check out this yeah. song. You know, stuff like that. But the only time that we really talk music and that kind of thing is when all four of us are in a room together with our instruments on. But rarely do one of us like, oh, hey, I have this, you know, we don't, really, you know, we used to say that uh, Brody basically comes in with a skeleton and we all kind of add the meat, you know, finish this, the assembly. But it's, yeah, it's, I would say, you know, 99.9% of everything is Brody comes in with an idea. And if it's not a full, complete idea, you know, she definitely has the direction and she knows what she wants. And then we kind of, we'll start bouncing ideas at that point. But we, we've never really been one to sit around and, and shoot ideas back and forth or, or direction or musical ideas of what we want to do. It just, we sit around and talk about UFOs and weird trippy shit. So what's kind of cool is, so Sing Sing Death House is 02 and then Coral Fang's 03 and you change labels and Sire, I think is it, major imprint right of warner does that mm-hmm. change anything for you guys in terms of approach or style or anything like that or no um 
No, you know, every, every man, the dynamic of every band, every deal, every legal situation, and, you know, every uh, record contract is different and how, and all that. But with this band, we're very much, fuck you, we're going to do it ourselves. Yeah. With, with, when that happened, just prior to that, there was, I mean, um, we went, we did the tour with Garbage and No Doubt, and then uh, K Rock picked up uh, City of Angels and put it on, um, oh, what was that show? They had a show, the, Five at nine, I think is what it was. And uh, you'd call in and vote for your song, which your favorite song. And we did some, I can't remember, but it was like, oh, wow, that's rad. People like us, we're resonating. That's awesome. And it kept going. And so we had labels from all over, like, hey, you know, and some labels would fly us. We got flown to New York and man, I had a really good dinner. And then we played a show there and the head of that label left the show pissed off because we he thought we had played a hardcore set to piss him off like yeah we're punk we'll show you how punk we are and it's just like <laughs> okay well obviously that was not going to be a good fit for us right. uh, but um yeah no with it's very important to us in the contracts is that we we keep creative control you know awesome. and uh and warner you know that was kind of a lucky situation where hey we can do what we want to with a little bit more funding behind us and a little bit you know uh a, a, in a larger network you know, we're, we're getting to, we're getting to test the waters of a bigger arena and we get to do, and they're letting us do it our way. So let's, let's go. Best of both worlds. That's amazing. Yeah. I think, I mean, you can do anything as long as you stay focused to why you're doing it. You lose sight of why you're doing it. And that's when you can easily get manipulated, you know, end up being something you're not, or end up on a talk show or a real, I'm sorry, a reality TV show using oh, somebody's geez. name that <laughs> isn't yours. You had asked why yeah, I was... had changed my name. <laughs> and there you go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can we can we dig in a little bit, or is that? Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> yes. I, I okay. My last name is Sinnet, and half of that is Sin. Um, when I joined the band, I have two younger sisters, and my dad uh, was both my parents are teachers. Uh, my dad was a coach for forty seven years, and he's the kind of he was the kind of person that if you knew him it's going to have an impact on the rest of your life. A lot of coaches that came from there, there's people still at that high school, but I came home from a tour and someone called the house looking for me. Cause my dad had, Oh yeah, my son's coming home from the tour. And you know, they don't really have that. Not like we're big and famous, but people freak me out. And somebody calling the house, I don't know, asking for me to, you know, I'm kind of worried about my younger sister. So I, I went with an alias mm-hmm. try and, you know, disassociate a bit years and years later. I have, uh, was married and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> someone decided to use that name as well, not legally. And then they went on a reality TV show using that name. And that was big red X for me. <clears throat> Buzzer <laughs> scored. And I said, yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> so I stopped using that name. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> and, um, but then, yeah, just uh, so actually somewhat recently we were, uh, we meet as in the, the we's in my own head. We're thinking on that. And it's like, that's stupid. I, I, you know, that's a persona I created mm-hmm. and in the big picture, like, Nobody knows that story unless I decide to tell it. It's, you know what I mean? So yep. that's why there's that weirdness where I had that name. Then you see Sin it in some places. And now you also see Sin. On my social medias, there is a photographer out there whose legal name is Ryan Sin. I've had a few conversations with him and he seems like a nice guy. However, he will not respond to me. And he's had his Instagram uh, name inactive, unposted for like going on nine or 10 years now, bud, let it up. Let me get that name. (laughs) Come on, come on, Brian, send him that that Instagram. Let's go. We'll invite him on the podcast. We'll chat and get his Um, story. I'm glad we didn't get him by accident. I'm not going (laughs) to lie to you. (laughs) It probably would have been good, man. I don't know what happened to the dude. Just the name association. I was kind of checking out his stuff and he was a talented photographer. Nice. Nice. I have a question for Tony, actually, that, that for you, your dad's a coach. What does he coach? Or what did he coach? Well, he, he, um, he coached everything. He coached me in soccer for yep. almost 11 years, uh, cross country, baseball. He was uh, a, a little bit of basketball, but he was not my basketball coach. He was not allowed to coach us uh, football mm-hmm. um, because he <laughs> – it's actually in the paper from back then. Um, it's a great story. But Coach Senate, you can Google it. Coach Senate benches the varsity team. Um, <laughs> so he uh, – on senior cut day, that's a thing, I guess. I got I, I went to two years of high school and got kicked out. But senior year, you got your uh, senior cut day. They had the big game coming up, and Coach Senate said, anybody that cuts on senior cut day, I'll bench your ass. They The whole team cut because senior cut day. So he benched the whole team in a championship, made the JV team play twice. They won, 
but the school is so pissed off. They say you can't, wow. you can't do football can't do no that more. anymore. Yeah. So yeah. So then he, uh, then he started, then he switched to soccer, which is for me personally, I don't know if you guys got the Apple TV, but Ted Lasso, I lost my dad three years ago and it's like, I get to hang out with him again. It's the same story. I love it. That's awesome. That's great, man. I only ask cause my dad's coached basketball for, I'm, I'm going to be 37 this year. He's coached basketball since I was probably four or five. So I grew up in basketball gyms. So it Dude, makes same. me mine smile was, uh, to hear that. Yeah, it makes yeah, you no, smile to hear. Was, that. I was the I had to sweep the gym, sweep the uh, the basketball gyms because I'd go with him to coach yep. for whatever it was, and then they'd have weight room after, and then uh, weight room and showers. And I was I don't know probably yeah from when I could walk till yep. I co- he had a summer camp that I coached at when I was thir- thirteen or fourteen. But up until then, yeah, as every time. All right, hit the lockers. I was like, God damn it. I grab the broom and go push <laughs> yeah, around a yeah. big room in the dark. <laughs> I'd go find I'd find money under the bleachers <laughs> during his practice. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, our place was too clean, man. I, I, or I was well, you did a good early. job. That you did a good job. <laughs> you kept <laughs> keeping it clean. So from so from there, um I know, so right? We I just took us way off topic. I'm sorry. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Dude, it's kind of funny because we used to like it's not we didn't do it on purpose, but like I don't, uh, I don't party anymore, but back in the day, a little bit. And uh, in interviews, it's not like we hated the interviewer or that they were that bad. Um, a lot were, but sometimes you just kind of get off track, you know, or you kind of, you miss for a second and it's kind of hard to reconnect. And a lot of times it'd be like, oh, you lost us. And w- we would always flip the sports. Yeah. It would always end up, the, <laughs> yeah. the conversation would be, it, the minute that you lost us, somehow you'd end up, you having the distillers talking about this current sporting events. <laughs> awesome. and, and then the interview would end, and I think both parties would walk away going, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> we do have more distillers questions. We do have more you playing, you know, shows coming up here. That's, that we definitely want to know about that stuff. Yeah, so, so Coral Fang drops. Do you tour off, like, do you end up touring off that for a couple of years, and then you guys kind of go your separate ways? Is that how it went the short version yeah 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 from when i joined the band um until the i guess the wrap-up of the coral fang touring um there was no breaks uh i'd be home i think the longest break that i had i'm sorry i'm trying to chase the sun here i keep getting oh wait i'm indoors there's a light (laughs) now i can see (laughs) yeah like i said when i joined the band i had about two weeks at home and then we and then oh sorry then uh sing sing death house and then touring, and then um, for Coral Fang, uh, moved to L.A. into a furnished apartment and lived there for almost two months while we wrote the album. And then all of us moved up to a recording studio outside of San Francisco for five weeks and recorded. And then I think we went home for a week and a half or two weeks and then touring again. And I think the, the longest break that I had in that four and a half years, I think I was home for almost a month wow. or they'll say a month, give or take. But it was usually... I mean, sometimes I'd be home for two days, three days, sometimes, you know, home for a week. And that was kind of just how it was. <laughs> That's, you know, in hindsight, we could should have just said, hey, we're taking summer off. Don't anybody ring anybody's phone. You know, I'll call you in the fall when the kids go back to school, have a great time. Yeah. But yeah, we were just so just kind of, you know, uh, burnt out beyond belief, I would say. And not in a negative way of like, poo poo, I don't want to do this anymore. It was just, yeah. I mean, just, you know, yeah. the wheels had been ground. They needed to be oiled, They, you know. You need, yeah, you need time to recharge. I mean, you can't just go, go, go at all times. It's people aren't, yeah, we all, that yeah, your 20s do not last forever. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Neither do your 30s. Damn it. Fuck. 40. Yeah. Holy shit. Old. I know. It's coming. You know, I think, I think I hit like, I hit 35 when I was round at 26. So, <laughs> yeah. So you did some other stuff musically in this time that you were. Uh, the distillers kind of went separate ways. Uh, obviously, uh, you were in Angels and Airwaves for a minute, and then you had the Innocent too. So, uh, oh wow, talk a little you know bit about, about those? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Do um, we do oh. we do our homework, man? <laughs> um, well, unfortunately, the first one I can't say much about. That's fine. Um, yeah, they're the NDAs are a son of a bitch, you know. But um, hey, if you want to send me a Venmo in a very large amount, you know, we can get rid of that NDA <laughs> right now. Uh, no, but the innocent, that was that I'll talk about that all day because that was so short lived and so fun that it's kind of like, damn, that could have been well, it could have been more fun for me. I don't know, you know, never had a chance to see how anybody else really uh what anybody else thought of it. But that was a fun one. That was like that was one of those weird things where uh, adult friends try and hang out. I guess that's a good way to put it, yeah. And it was um so yeah, Brandon from uh, Bleeding Through singing, and then Dave Nassie 
from uh, No Use for a Name and uh, um, Brooks Wackerman uh, from Bad Religion at the time. Um, that and and myself and well, yeah, we're gonna make a metal band, but like a like a horror themed metal band, which I didn't know about at the time because I'm not gonna tell any singer what they need to be singing about. But when the lyrics came back, it was just like, yeah, it's all horror. It's a horror movie. <laughs> Say, were you friends with those guys before? Yes and no. Uh, my friend uh, Nicole, who I met on Warp Tour, a Canadian that I met in Canada, uh, and then she ended up moving down to Southern California, and her and Brandon were married for a little while, and it was kind of like this weird, some of my friends and the circle of new friends kind of intertwining, and uh, Brandon and Dave had wanted to play in a metal band together, and yeah. so that was the birth of this band, and then Dave ended up joining Bleeding Through, which was the end of Innocent, because... That, whole, that that point had been served but it was fun creating those three songs that we did and we had a few more and what nobody knows about and which was my favorite part of the band where i was getting really excited is that brooks had to bail i thought at the time it was because tenacious d was getting back together and i was kind of like oh man well have fun brooks <laughs> but yeah it was for something else and so my friend adrian um erlinson from at the gates had agreed to come and play and that no was way. for me like oh, yeah um adrian wow. and i met years ago we've been friends for a long time and it's just it just felt like one of those things that like we're gonna play music together i just don't know when and we've tried a few times and that was the one where i was like it's happening it's happening it's happening and uh then it didn't happen, but I have one song that he demoed on, and every once in a while I put it on. There's no lyrics on it. It was just a very, very rough. David sent me, I think it's just his guitar, and you can hear his picking. He's so close to the, you know, the mic's too close to the strings. I think it's just on his phone, and uh, I had written some stuff to that. Brandon had not put vocals to it, but I put that every once in a while, put that on. I thought, man, this would have been fun. There would have been some circle pits to that shit. That's amazing. Somebody get Randy on the phone. Get, <laughs> Lamb of God, let's make yeah, it happen. It's not, it's some not over yet. It's not over yet. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say, you can still find the demo online. You get a dig, but oh. it, it's it's online. Oh, right. Yeah, I have, a, I have a CD of it. I only have one copy. And like every few years, I'll burn a new copy. Because I always think I'll like, you know, save it. You know, this would be the stack of stuff that I've done. And I always end up digging through it at some point going, well, what did that sound like? Oh, okay. Like old hardcore nice. bands from when I was, you know, in high school and whatnot. It's awesome. I, I wish there was like a polished full length. It would It would have done very well. It was fun. I walked out of work and you know what? I didn't realize at the time I like, I, I walked out of this, this job that I had on a sidewalk and a truck drove by with blaring it. And I was like, no shit. And it <laughs> took me like in hindsight, I want to say months later, it's like, Oh, that was the dude that was in the store that we were talking music. I was like, Oh, you should check out my band. And he did. But I was like, Whoa, it's going places. People <laughs> are no, people are hearing. It. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been. I wish it had done something just because it would have been, for me, just a lot of fun to play those songs live. I had I bought a wah-wah pedal for it. I mean, come on. It would have been great, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I can just picture that chain reaction in the place going nuts. That's Yeah, that, see, that's that's what I'm talking about. That energy in a small little place like that, like like what you see in the old Pantera videos. <laughs> just like if you can capture that that energy and it's in that small room and you get to be on stage and part of that, oh, yeah, sign me up again. And that was actually my question. You guys never played any gigs at all? No, all we actually never even played as a band. Wow. It was all entirely done. Um, actually, I, well, I did all my stuff at home in the same room I'm talking to you. Oh, actually, no, it was oh weird. It was a different house, but the <laughs> layout was the same. I just, re I just realized that. I did you just wake up from room. a long dream? I just set this room up last week, and I'm looking at it now going, whoa, the same room from 20 years ago. But yeah, I did everything at home, and then Dave had access to a studio, a recording studio, and I went there uh, once to add uh, some keyboard stuff to it and for a little bit of mixing. But we never got together, all, all of us as a band. We did for a Christmas dinner once, but we never played any music together in the same room. Uh, Technology is weird. That would have been a wild Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. It, it was a pretty fun time. So you, the distillers, you guys get back together 2018, right? Yep. Some some music being made, some touring going on. Where are we at with that? Oh, we are in that weird juxtaposition going, wait, is the pandemic's over? Is it? Are, okay, we're, yeah, no, yeah, no, okay. I heard June, June 15th. We got five days and we're done, according yeah. to California. Thinks that's it. They're putting up the walls against COVID on the 15th. But, um, well, we got, well, yeah, we, we have recorded an album uh, that will – 
Um, let's just say there'll be new music this year. I hate making promises and giving dates and saying what's what because the last, last like three or four things that I'm, yeah, I'm looking, oh, it's done. I didn't even get to tell anybody about it before it got canceled. This virus sucks. But yeah, new music this year. And then we got the uh, Louder Than Life Festival in September. And that's just, uh, I'm just itching to play. Like, I mean, pull a truck a truck bed around and it convince everybody to come down here and put our concert, you know, on my street. That'd make me happy. I want to play so bad, but I think it'd be great to come back on a big festival. A lot of people, like, I'm just looking forward to the noise, which is a weird thing. I want to hear that many people in one place. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, we talk about that at, at length, just as fans, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like the whole COVID thing's obviously pretty crazy and gnarly, but at the end of the day, like concerts are the epitome of being in a crowd, grimy, sweaty walls, shit everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we're looking forward to it, you know? Um, and during lockdown, have you been kind of just, I know the excitement stuff, you've just been practicing and I guess writing with the band and stuff? Um, no, I uh, haven't been doing much of anything, honestly. My, uh, uh, my fiance was lucky enough to kind of switch and work from home. And she also, uh, so her day started very early and ended very late every day. She's going to work and then she got her bachelor's degree during the pandemic and, uh, practicing a little bit and whatnot, but for most part, I was quiet for a year. That's the best way to put it. I, I read some books. I, uh, I, I started painting again. I just got myself an iPad so I don't have to rely on the weather being nice. Cause I have to paint outside. I don't have anywhere to do it in the house, but on a, now I, now I can draw on my iPad. Nice. But yeah, anything creative and, and quiet is what I is what I did. You're ready for that loud room then. Oh yeah, I'm I'm tired of having this voice all the time. <laughs> I remember the first time that I went out and you know and the stores were open and I stopped at my local place and yeah, could I get a and what? Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was funny. I actually there was a a, a woman <laughs> at a, a place I went to and she was getting really frustrated because she couldn't hear any what huh? Uh, why can't I hear anybody? She's getting so mad about it. And I'm just like, there's 20 people in this room all trying to talk and nobody is using their outdoor voice. Everybody's in there talking like this because they've been talking oh, like that for a year. And it was so, and she was just visit, you know, visibly getting so frustrated that she was having trouble here. And she thought it was something with her. It was funny. One, all it takes is one person, you Hey, speak up and you know, right. fix the problem. I'm the asshole and I got to leave, but Hey, now they can hear each other. Right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you mentioned Louder Than Life. That's coming up in September in Kentucky, right? Late September in Kentucky. Your yeah. day is stacked, too. And and you guys are high up on the bill, which is awesome. I, that's that's going to be a pretty exciting, like, Saturday, big, big day on the bill. And the, the bill's huge anyway, if you look at the whole four days. We talked about it a couple weeks ago on our festival episode. And we saw you guys, and we're like, whoa, that's going to be a fun day. Uh, you you got to be pretty stoked. I am. I am. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Come on, Nine Inch Nails, Snoop Dogg. Right. <laughs> I, yeah. who, I'm sorry. You could tell me who else is on the bill. Wonderful. I'm glad they're they're Nine Inch Nails and Snoop Dogg. And Both I think written it's down us. right here. Nine Inch Nails and Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I, I think I think I have it planned out. Is like we play. I take a shower. I get something to eat. Snoop Dogg, Nine Inch Nails. That's I think my night. No, I'm excited. There's actually a lot of artists on the bill that uh, it, I'm, I'm so out of touch. I live in a bubble and I still listen to the same music I've been listening to. You know, very few bands kind of creep in. I'll find something new once or twice a year that becomes part of the the the, the everyday listening. Um, but Reading and Leeds, when we played that, there were some artists on there I never heard of, some that I'd heard of. And I'm like, I don't get it, man. I do not get the hype with this. What's it about? And then seeing them live and seeing the energy and how that translates and I'm just a fan of that. When you get a bunch of people together and you can tell that like, you know, hundreds of people are all together in this positive energy field, just, you know, giving back and forth. I mean, Hey, I didn't get it, but now I do like that's, you know, that exchange is that's why I'm here. And, you know, I think that's the, all artists, we, you know, our arts crap until someone else tells, you know, everything sucks until someone else validates for it. Hey, I like what you did. That's cool. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, you know, and so when you have that, you know, big groups of people, I'm going to keep saying the same thing and describing it 15 different ways, but you got it. Oh, the hell yeah. We, and we, I think we, we feel an, on a smaller scale similar, like when someone's like, hey, man, I checked out that, that interview you had with Ryan Sinnott. Uh, that was awesome. Like, oh, thanks. Like, we, we thought we had a good time with him, too. I'm glad you like it. So it's always <laughs> yeah. oh, feels yeah. good, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, man. And oh, there's something about you get that many people that are, you know, out in the sun, sweaty, nasty, and nobody cares because it's so much fun, you know, and you get thousands of people doing that and everybody's having fun and it's just, okay, we're all having fun. I love this. 
it's funny. We had uh, Frank Turner, who I know you're playing with on that uh, cruise next year, but he was just yeah. saying like he, he's done all these um, live streams in the pandemic and they're all sitting down. So he's like, am I going to be able to do this? Like standing up, like the muscle memory, like you, are you kind of nervous in any, any, any way or no, no. I, you know what? It's, I get nervous on my skateboard. I don't get nervous playing music. The first show that I played with the distillers was at Phoenix, Arizona, uh, warp tour. Uh, it was a horrible, um, experience for me. Um, I, I was told if I fucked up that I would have the bass taken away from me and somebody else would, uh, not nobody in my band, nobody in my band. This wasn't put on me by them. This was put on me by, by outside. Um, but, uh, that, yeah, if I fucked up, the bass is going to be taken away from me and there, someone else is going to finish the show and I'll be sent home. And I've never played, I play like the largest show I think I ever played, like beside Punkets in the Park, that's, you know, as a teenager and it's all my skate friends. And, you know, maybe I didn't know five people out of the 30 people that was there, but this was 18,000 people in front of bands that I had, you know, really loved growing up or whatnot. And they're all staring at you. And then to be told that and kind of like, holy fucking kidding me, my knees are knocking. And the next day in Las Vegas, had a quick chat with Cool Keith and uh, watched um, fucking Hank 3 and Jackass play. And we were up next and I was, okay, fuck it. Hey, the nerves are out. And that show was one, like the first moment of like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Why should I be nervous about it? And I mean, doing it as long as I have now is man, like, what are you nervous about? You're going to fuck up. <laughs> You're going to fuck up anyway. So just keep going. Because like, if you fuck up and you know, that's what's going to let everybody else know. But if you just keep going, you're going to be the only person that knows what happened. So don't be nervous about it. Go have fun. I mean, when you look at, I mean, fuck, look at the world we live in today and how famous people are for being fuck ups. Someone right. makes a huge fucking <laughs> error on, and it's just on replay on national television, all over the news. Look at this fucking idiot. And now that idiot's got a million dollars. Just don't be an asshole. Go have fun. Exactly. I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's rad. But yeah. Um, I got a we did two okay. of those. Sorry, we yeah, we did two of those. Uh, the live streams. We did a Halloween one and a Christmas one. The Halloween one was uh, interesting for us because that was kind of out of our element. That's not something you know. We're not the band that sits around backstage unless there's something. Hey, let's work on this. I, I'm stuck on this part. Can you guys help me through it? Kind of thing. But we don't, you know, sit around with our acoustic guitars and sing Kumbaya for fun. You know, um, we'll, <laughs> we watch ridiculousness on the bus <laughs> and laugh. But. Uh, <laughs> that was a fun one out of our element and like yeah i can understand like it was saying every, it's everything sitting down and it's and it's bizarre because your audience is a camera in a dark room yeah right and that isn't as prevalent as it was in the 90s we don't have all we don't have 120 minutes playing those intimate sit down shows you know i think the last one i saw henry rollins had a show that he was doing that reminded me of that old mtv format but now yeah it's you got to bring that live energy to that little tiny black circle on the other side of the room um the christmas one was a lot funner uh we had full control over both of them playing ideas of what we want to do and they were both definitely a lot of fun but nothing in comparison to being in a room where in front of people you know and having that that live interaction there's no energy cameras don't give back any energy it's no one energy. guy yeah yep. no you you hear a cut that was great you guys that was great all right let's yeah. roll it again i think yeah. you got one more it looks okay you're like oh okay cool at least at least hey at least you didn't say all right, we're going to need more energy, you guys, you know, or anything like that. It's okay, <laughs> I guess we're doing good, you know. Or, or as Frank said, is his cat is clapping in the background for him <laughs> yeah, yeah. in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that, man. It's, yeah, it's it's weird. Japan, playing in Japan can be like that. Even the live shows, just culturally between songs, it's, you know, very polite to, you know, interrupt you in case you're going to talk. Or I don't, I don't really understand it, but it's quiet. And, and I like it because it adds this breath. Nice. And it, at first it's awkward. You're like... Oh, they, they hate us. I, like, this is weird. This, can somebody at least boo? I don't know how to read this. <laughs> Give me something. And, uh, but after a while, it kind of, it adds to this weird kind of spookiness because they go crazy and the music's loud and everything's happening. And then the song stops and then the next song goes. And in those little moments, it's almost like that, that, uh, that brief moment before the killer comes out with the ax in the movie, you know, which is kind of that what's going to happen. And then boom, you're right back into it. Those that's fun. But yeah, the, the, uh, mm. The streaming was like that, but minus the, the the kick to get back into gear. It's just okay. This next song is called right. You know, it's it's a different, totally different. Um, going back to the live stuff, I think it's just going to be uh, man. You know, safety. You know, uh, speaking outside of the lines of safety, I wish we were able to play a little bit earlier because I think those first few shows 
uh, are going to be just so, so special people, you know, after being indoors for so long and just, even when you get out, you know, you want to go to the supermarket, which for here it's, it's always packed or home Depot. Those are nightmare places here, but you go in there now. And it's like, Oh, I got to stand outside for a little bit. By the time I get in, they're still, you know, I'm not running into people. It's all spaced out. So I, I would love to be at those first few where everybody's together. Like, I, you know, I'm freaking out because I'm been around Have people. Been, like, I mean, freaking out in the good way, you know? Yeah. yeah I want to be ha- there at the beginning. We haven't been around that. people. Yeah, we have, and we have tickets to a couple of shows here in Maine. They're outdoor venues, so I'm sure it won't be as, like, elbow to elbow. But, like, I have one for an indoor venue, and I'm like, is this going to be awesome or am I going to be uncomfortable? And I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm excited for it because I'm getting to go to it. So I think there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of nervous energy, but like happiness to be back in the space. Yeah. I went to, I went to one event like that. Um, there was a grand opening and uh, it, it was long enough now that if I had gotten it, I would have known, but um, it, it was a little, a month and a half or so ago. And the first 20 minutes were like that. You know, people were showing up, not really, not quite sure what to expect, realizing that, hey, if we're going to stay here, we're going to be closer to people than we have been, you know, just running out of space. And and it was like that maybe the first 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, people figuring it out. But man, once the barbecue got fired up and it was like a car show and there's some other stuff going on, uh, a few celebrities there. Uh, but once it started rolling, people didn't give a shit and everybody was having fun. Everybody was so happy to be outdoors and it was like, like, it's a, it's in a weird area of my town too, where there's a lot of different cultures. I'll put it. There's a, a, a like a work box right where I park, and it's spray painted "fuck white people." And that's where I got to park to go to this place. So, it's in that kind of a neighborhood. But I mean, there was 150, 200 people there that did not. They, they weren't thinking about it anymore. Everybody was just happy to be around people. That's awesome. Which I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm a hermit because I go someplace and I'm like, oh, there are too many people here. Fuck that, I'm going home. And it's completely 180. I'm like, let's get more people out. Come on, let's get together. Let's have fun. Well, like some of these shows, they're they're already sold out. So it's like, is it sold out because it's a reduced capacity, or are people so excited that it's full capacity and stuff selling out? Like it's gonna be. I'm like looking forward just to see the dynamics of, is it reduced cap or is this like people are eager to get out there? Yeah, that'll be man. I don't think about things like that because uh, I play bass. <laughs> and I'll focus on that. I start thinking too much about the business kind of things. And there are conversation things to be aware of for sure. But to a certain point, I just can't think about that. Otherwise, I'm going to, you know, if I walk out on stage and it's half house, I'm going to, oh, fuck, and feel like a failure right. before we hit the first note. So sorry, it, I like, I've had moments. Up. No, that's all right. I've had moments where I've had to like tell, uh, um, you know, the band been like, all right, remember why you started playing music? You remember right. being in your room, playing along with the stereo, having the best night of your life? Cause you're going to go there tonight mentally. Cause it's not looking too good. Yeah. And then you walk yeah. out there and the place is fucking sold out. Actually, that it's a true story that happened. I was, you know, trying to like, all right, here's the pep talk. Cause tonight's going to fucking suck. And then in whatever interim between I'd seen the house looking like crap and what's going on stage, it was, Hey, it's all going to work out. And I learned a trick too, is that when the house is like that, they'll just move the lighting. So you can't from the stage, you can't see that. And that's great. My eyes are closed half the time anyway. So whatever, <laughs> I'm just happy to be there. I love it. I love it. Man. Speaking of shows, uh, Ryan, we had one more that I was thinking of. When do you guys find out about these shows? Is it like a group email? Like are you getting, are you obviously getting stuff from management, but you said it's kind of, obviously COVID's kind of throwing everything for a loop. So. Well, yeah, we, I mean, we have a good team. I, you know, and I trust everybody and I'm like, I'm not the type of person that needs to know, but yeah, I kind of, I'm comfortable enough. I trust everybody. They'll let me know what I need to know when I need to know it. I play bass. Yeah. That's what I, that's what, that's what I, that is my focus and my excuse for anything I don't want to do. Uh, <laughs> nice. <but, laughs> no, yeah, we got a team that kind of plans it out. There are, I mean, you know, of course, if there's a place that I want to go or anybody wants to go or places that like, uh, there again, um, you know, let's hit that next time. Or like, oh, it's going to be cold there right now. And those are very vain and stupid things that I don't think would ever stick. But of course, someone's going to mention it. Um, but it's usually things that like, you know, they'll come up with a plan. We'll look at it and then be like, Oh, we're going around there. Oh, Hey, can we get an extra day off so we could maybe, you know, get a band day? Uh, Oh, here's something we didn't, I didn't, we never thought about this or knew anything about it, but it, it came around, especially when, uh, 2018. So we've been playing again. Um, we get told a lot how bizarre it is for people to hang out with us that we're all friends and good friends and they're my best friends and my family. So when touring comes up and there's certain places and it'd be like, Oh, can we get an extra day off? Cause we want to take a band day to go to Dollywood or something, you know? And like, mm-hmm. 
we'll do things like that. And, uh, but for the most part, I mean, we have a booking agent that's taken a percentage of our income to book shows. So I'm not going to get in the way of that. You know, I trust right. that he's, he's earning, he or she, they're earning the money for a reason. And, uh, I, I've been happy with our tour. So I play nice. bass. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's the name of the episode. I play bass. The right I bass. Bass. Um, <laughs> dude, honestly, most most of my speculation on uh, like when it comes to touring, my personal stuff uh, of you know when you're talking about full capacity, is it going to be full capacity or a half room? Um, I make my guesses off the financial market. I have some family that works in the financial industry, and when they represent companies that have to you know look at their product movement and things like that, so they have to make these huge multi million dollar decisions if people are going to get together or not. And I'm not a super smart man, but I'm smart enough to know that if companies are putting millions of dollars and saying people are going to be getting back together, then people are going to be getting back together. Cause yep. Yep. Yeah. unfortunately money seems to matter a lot more than life to a lot of, you know, people in power. And so, uh, Hey man, I knew not to trip out on Y2K cause my dad said, there's no way they're going to lose that much money. <laughs> right. You know? He yeah. wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. <laughs> um, that, that, that's, both positive and negative in a couple of different ways that I, I'm going to focus on the positive. I like that. We're going to get back together. Music's happening. You guys are playing shows. You're getting on a cruise. Like all this stuff is happening. So, Oh man, that one's, yeah, that cruise is, I've never been on a cruise. That, that was a positive negative for me too. I got so, my first pro tip from someone that's done it and they said, bring an air mattress, sleep on the balcony. Yep. I would have nice. never thought of that. And I'd probably oh, thrown wow. up 15 times in that room. I went on a whale watching trip once. Oh, a lot of vomit. Oh, 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 boy. <laughs> so how do you get how do you book a cruise i mean you, you talked about your booking agents and having that stuff but like you guys have to say yes to that like that has to be something you want to do oh yeah well yeah we definitely get offers you know that like there's offers that come in i'm sure there's a lot more that come in that maybe i don't hear about like because like i said i don't you know i trust them um we have meetings you know with our management we get together you know talk about uh, you know, any bands that you guys want to tour with that kind of a thing. We get to put a little bit, you know, you kind of, it's kind of like putting all of your wants and, and, you know, what do you guys want to do? Oh, we'd love to do this. And they go, okay, well, you know, from a, a management standpoint and a business standpoint, that part sounds good. That part doesn't, you know, I mean, it's a business and I play bass, <laughs> but um, yeah, we get tours that we say yes to. We, oh man, we've had to say no to some tours that have really sucked just scheduling wise, you know, which I can assume, you know, similar to, uh, being an actor is, you know, there's movies and roles. I'm sure that you're like, Oh, are you kidding me? I'm getting this offered now when I can't do it because I'm already over here doing that. You know, it, it happens, but I'm look at, uh, fuck, I'm gonna steal one from Ted Lasso. Yeah. Please tell me how hard your life is playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's everything's relative. And that, that makes sense. The, the actor uh, analogy is great. Nate, I think you just stole the analogy crown from you. So. Uh, analogy king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's always got great analogies, so that was that was a good one. I, that makes sense. Like, oh, we're already playing this show. I can't go play that that festival, that tour too. So, yeah, we've actually had to dodge some angry phone calls from people that didn't understand. They thought that we said no, as in the like, what? No, we don't want to do that. Where in honesty, be like, fuck yeah, we want to. Yep. If you will wait. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. We already have a show <laughs> that night, or yep. we're on tour. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, I mean, oh, I can only. <laughs> right now it's got to be crazy because i mean we have we have pushed shows going on year two you know yeah. i mean it's crazy we were supposed to play in july and that got pushed to this year and now it's pushed till next year and so it's yeah man it's a it's a it's a wild world out there thank god that there's uh management teams and people that can yeah. do that end of it because i, I play bass all right we got a couple quick hitters lightning round yeah. Yeah, we do a, kind of a quick hit around. If you've listened to us, Ryan, we do some. It's basically all the questions that don't fit into the interview. Perfect. <laughs> but like, we want to know. We just we don't know, know where we could sequence them. You know. Nate, you want to start? Yeah, I got one for you, Ryan. I know you're a big vinyl guy. Uh, what's uh, we're big vinyl people here too. We do like a Sunday spin, throw some records on, and uh, showcase them and whatnot. Uh, what's your most prized record? I know it's hard to pick one, but you could even say three. Let's make it three. <laughs> Eight, okay. Try it. <laughs> um, I mean, you got to choose so, one kid, nah, three kids. So I walked in, um, friend of mine, a guy, a guy that I know uh, here in San Diego in the scene, opened a record store called, if you're in San Diego, it's actually in La Mesa, one city to the east, uh, reanimated records in La Mesa. I uh, went to go check out my buddy's new shop, heard great things, walked in there, and I'm looking at, you know, they, every record store has got like the, the, the rarities wall. 
you know, they got all the records up that are up high that are expensive. And I'm like, he's got a lot of Nick Cave and all and some cool old shit up there. Oh, wow. And then boom, right in the middle, Coral Fang, 400 fucking dollars. I was wow. like, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> so another friend of mine told me about Discogs. And so I signed up for Discogs and I'm, I logged my entire record collection and it's still the most valuable record that I own. And uh, there's not like a yeah, random fucking records where it's, it's just like, oh, wow. <laughs> I was a part of something that resonated so strongly with people that it has, you know, the market demand is asking that much. And I, I think it's crazy, but oh, yeah. to, that's like, so to be a part of something that like to, you know, years later, walk into a friend's record store and the most expensive thing he's selling is something that I helped create was just a real fucking mind melter. Yep. Um, and just, and now like uh, my tattoo artist, she's on a mission to hunt it down. And she told me, and I was like, well, you know what? I, I think I might have, no, no, no. I got to hunt it. I got to find it. Okay. And it's kind of cool that people have that appreciation that like, cause I remember when you were a kid, you had like what, five CDs, six CDs. And that's it. You want another one? Oh, I got to go mow some lawns. Mm -hmm. Got to oh, go yeah. down to the store and hope they have it in stock and got to spend, you know, 15 or was it 14 99, 10 99 to 16 99 for a CD. Cause you wanted yep. to hear one song. Sometimes the rest of it sucked. And you're like, God damn it. Bought the wrong single. Yep. Right. Have it, have but, it too yeah, many times. You know, so it excites me. It makes me happy that to be to be a part of that years later, to, to still in, in a very small faction of that still happening. It's just like, wow, that is so rad to to be on the the other end of it. You know, being I used to be on the on the oh, I want, I want, I want. And now I'm kind of on the end of being able to give a little. Yeah. That feels good. My other one would have to be my newly acquired far side box set. Ooh. Wow. Nice. Far, which far side though? Give me one second. I'll be right back. No, actually, I think I can still hear you. I'll show you. Um, well, the hip hop group or the OC yes, punk yes. band? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. The hip hop, the good one. <laughs> well, I'm wearing a Far Side T-shirt. That's why. <laughs> I, I'm not familiar. Actually, the good I I'm not familiar with the other. I'm not familiar with the other Far Side. This right, is the I, only Far Side I know. Like pass me by. And yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But yeah, this one I had. I saw it on the shelf. This is a. Oh, yeah, that's a, dope. A, that is dope. It's a big boy. And every one of these has got a record behind it. Um, wow. It actually opens up one more, and there's two records on this side. But it's super awesome because it's a rad album, and then it actually has um, all the hits, LP4 and LP5. Oh, I'm sorry, 3, 4, and 5 are the singles and remix remixes of. So you listen to the whole album, and then you know you want to listen to the hits again. You know mm -hmm. When you're into it, and you're like, oh, I want to listen to that song. And boom, you just keep going, and it happens anyways. But yeah, I saw it on the shelf and I wanted it for a long time. Uh, and it's next door to this place where I get uh, coffee. So when I go to buy coffee, I pop into the record store and I would see it and I would see it and I would see it. And then one day it was $10 off. Ooh, Boom. Nice. I call myself the, the deal cobra. I just wait in the craft and <laughs> strike when I see that deal. Yes. Oh, so man. yeah, those, I'll, I'll give you two. I couldn't think of my, uh, my other most prized one. Um, I have a seven inch uh, from Reptile, which was a, a side project from the singer of uh, the 69 eyes that was a i really loved that band for a, a while and um musically their image was a bit much uh for me in the end i don't know if you're familiar with those guys the helsinki vampires um it's a rad thing i just kind of i don't know for so, it's hard for me sometimes when you lose is it real or is it an image like kiss they're a perfect example right. did kiss make good music or is kiss selling you a, a good image were they were they repped by uh, like Bam Margera pretty hard? I think for a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah towards the end. Yeah, towards the end. They're man, they have some. They're oh man, they're kind of like the the spooky Rolling Stones to me. But um, but uh, yeah, the singer's uh, um, friend uh, some somehow ran into a friend of his here and was like, oh no way, you know who this band is? And I was oh, I was you know all I had the leather jacket and the gloves. I'm like yeah, I love this band. And so yeah, gave me uh, a seven inch. She's like, oh, yeah, here. And I had no idea what it was. And then it's some very small pressing of a, which I just love because it's probably something that he did with his friends and they had a few seven inches made for fun. And then just randomly some super fan on the other side of the globe got one. So that's probably just because I'll never find it again if I ever get, if I ever lose yeah. it or something. Discogs though, man. I mean, you're, you're speaking our language there too, because we all, we're all uh, signed up there and I, I track my, all the ones that I have. 
and what they're worth, yeah. and what what I want, and I put it on the want list, get the emails, all that. I mean, I love that shit. Oh, it's terrible. I got it. I had to get it. It was actually tipped off me by my friend when I bought the same John Denver album for the third time. He's like, you should get Discogs so that like you can, if you're not sure, you can look it up while you're in the store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that so many times. God, you get home, like, already, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn it. I already have it. <laughs> I think that's age too. Damn it. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, last last uh, lightning round, quick one. Favorite piece of nerdery. Now, we just went through some nerdery, obviously. Your records, that's nerdery to us. Nerdery is anything, though. It could be a tangible thing. It could be something you got overseas on tour. It could be something you've hung on to from the start. Favorite, you got some stuff hanging on the wall behind you. That's nerdery. Like, what's your favorite piece of nerdery that you have from all your time in the music industry? Oh, in the music industry. Oh, I mean, shit. or as a fan, uh, yeah, mu or as music, a fan. Music nerdery. Anything, yeah. yeah. Music nerdery. Fuck. <laughs> I have a few. I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, man. Actually, you know, I have a box of nostalgia in the garage, and I have things like the, the distiller's van key. We only have one van before we had made the, the, the jump to the buses. I have a van key. I have every tour laminate from every tour we've ever done, things like that. But now, you know, the, the thing for me is like, like, the, the that up there is sd 40 years and that social distortion their 40 year anniversary they asked us to play and nice. again being a kid that you know skateboarding around i mean back in the baggy pants small skateboard wheels days you know what i mean uh early 90s listening to social distortion and then all these years later they, they asked my band to come and, and play so i have that on my wall just like one of those wow. like no fucking way there's a I got a uh, Jerry Garcia signed a, a poster. You can see the misfit skull there that signed next to some artwork from Andy, the Murat. But I like collecting things like, uh, I'm sorry to step off here. No, you're good. Things I have, um, Shavo Odavian uh, launched his weed company, 22 Red, and uh, they did an apparel thing. And I always like to support musicians. And it's something like, don't want to turn it the, into the, complete that direction. But when it comes to cannabis, I, I think that musicians are going to make the best product because they have more to lose if it's shit. You know, like Method Man's right. gotten yeah. to call. And I'm sorry, but if Method Man is out there selling shit, we got to help us all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Shavo launched his company. And uh, off the bat, I bought one of his uh, sweatshirts. And so I got a little thing with uh, his signature and a little a little pick. And I'm not one to, like, fan out and collect that kind of stuff. But it was just kind of cool that, like, here's somebody like me, bass player, plays in a band, following his passion. And he was giving back the people that kind of supported him in the beginning. It's amazing. Thank you, Card, for Mike Nest for the social D thing, you know, a little personalized. Thanks for doing this. It's things like that now to me mean more than like the cool stuff that's been, you know, like I got a Han Solo that lived in two guitar cases in the beginning and now he sits on my desk. It's like an original old one that I had when I was a kid. That's, that's cool it. and all, but it's like that more ties into my personal journey, not the music journey. Right. Exactly. So well, that's, little, that's what we're talking notes about. Along the way. Yeah, that's nerdery, man. That's exactly what we're talking about. We have stuff. I have boxes. Of, I mean, there's a box sitting right here next to me that's Nate's shit from 20 years ago that just lives <laughs> yeah. at my house right now. And it's like I went through it and I was like, oh, man, I remember this. I have this, too. Like, it's Yo, like I'm such a sucker for that kind of thing. Like souvenir, not like so much like souvenirs, but like like. Like my first hockey, I went to my first hockey game ever um, last year, uh, or not last year, fuck was it, when we were out with Alexis on fire in Canada. <laughs> it was that, that was 2020. And so it was my first one. I had to get myself the, you know, we went to bobblehead day. Nice. So <laughs> it, that's my, Mr. Lube from Peter Stoyak. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I should know that. First hockey game. And, but that to me is my music thing because I, I'm not like, mm. I'm not a huge hockey guy. But I'm going to go catch every game I can now because when we were on tour, I went there up in Canada. It was cold as shit. I remember the breakfast I had that morning. Andy and sitting next to him and a friend of his, they introduced to, walk, you know, got to walk around the arena a bit. And so, yeah, I like that. What'd you call it? Nerdery? Oh, yeah. Nerdery. Yep. Nerdery. I like <laughs> well, that. Well, and you, you got a little nerdery sitting right there, yeah. don't you? So, Ryan, I think this will probably close us out. So, we, you know, we're all mid late 30s. We've been into music, you know, since the late 90s. We haven't thrown out a damn thing, and our wives hate us for it. So I went digging in my archives in the basement, and I found this, the Extreme Sound Sampler. So for our listeners, I'm holding up a, a Epitaph record summer, uh, must have been like a summer sampler. And what's on it? The Distillers, Seneca Falls from Sing Sing Death House. Wow. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? No. At all? <laughs> Not at all. I have a few of those. There, there is a few... Um, like uh, I have a DVD that Macbeth the, uh, Shoe Company had put out that we were on. I worked nice. for them briefly, and I actually found it in the warehouse. And I was like, "Oh no, shit! Look at that! I'm work I'm I'm selling my own 
product in a really weird way. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, those were cool. There's a like, man, that reminds me like of the old like Thrasher mag, and you know, like the Mail Drop or no, yeah. not Mail Drop. What was they had the little music section after Mail Drop and uh, like old skate videos. It's always fun. You get those mixes like Tony Hawk. I mean. I'm sure a lot of people know who we are because they discovered us in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. It's amazing. You know, and it's, oh, it's so fucking awesome. It's, it's man, to, yeah, I'm just, I'm stoked just to be able to have done that with my life. I mean, the first time I've been wanting to do, that's the only thing I ever did. Like from five years old, tinkering on the piano. It's like, I mean, I know music and I know nothing else. So to be sitting here having a conversation about it this many years later, it's just, man, man that's a trip, especially seeing CDs like that. <laughs> Where we've been fans for 25 years of, of all things music and nerdery, and to ha- be able to have you on to talk about it right now, that's all. Awesome. I got my bootlegs collection yeah. now. Nice. Oh, these, are all, all, these are all the, uh, I call this the cease and desist pile. <laughs> but <laughs> those are, um, yeah, that was fun back in the CD days. It's cool to see those old like mixtapes because they're, man, there's so many of them that were floating around. And yeah, those are some that were, uh, the only reason I say cease and desist is those are ones that were uh, put out as official. It has the word official in it. So, Wow. Yeah. Nice try. Thanks for the CD. <laughs> I have some DVDs too. As I worked at a bar for uh, uh, in the interim for about seven years. I worked at uh, security at this bar. And there's this wonderful uh, woman that used to come around and it took her a while to piece together or to figure out who I was because I'd always take the distillers ones out of her box and set them up on the bar <laughs> like I was going to buy them. But then like kind of – all right, well, you have a good, you know, and then she'd yeah. go and sell and take like, wait, why does he always take the same ones out? And then, yeah, she figured it out. She came in and gave me 10 of them. So these are all the ones I have. I'm sorry. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, but cool. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Ryan, 20 years later, and uh, we're Spotify monthly listener geeks and uh, distillers, 400,000 monthly listeners. That must be amazing to, uh, wow. to you know, kind of Damn. be on the create the creator side of that. Yeah. I, oh. Yeah, numbers, man. I, 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 I don't like math because you know nothing never adds up for me. But um, those things scare me. That's those are the things like where I'm like, yeah, I play bass. I mean, you know, it's right. like uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm fortunate enough to I started with my, my first bass, which, is, which I still have in the back there. Um, I got right before Warp Tour, uh, and that was my only bass for years. And now in this room, I have several. I have some in Stridge, and um, I've been able to live a life by doing so. And Dude, to be that fucking lucky and you, like it blows my mind all the time just to be able to do this and to live this life and so it's so fucking rad to have conversations about it where i get to geek out on stuff too <laughs> well hopefully you enjoyed geeking out with us because we had a blast too yes let's do it again hell yeah when i can talk more about like maybe i have something i can actually plug and get people hyped on and give them websites to go to and oh, things dude. to be excited about <laughs> we're, we're here for that absolutely we are here for that could do like a tour update Maybe uh, six months from now or something. Fuck. Uh, but dude, there better be a tour update. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so for all of us. <laughs> yeah. No, there there will. There's yeah. We'll have to, we'll do this again when I when when I have a little bit looser of a tongue. But yeah, there's uh we're we're gonna be busy. So nice. we'll we'll yeah. have lots to chat about again Let's and go. again and again. Well, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, uh this is a blast. Word. Thank you guys. It's been a lot of fun. Nate, bring me more beer. <laughs> Dude, do well, it, man. Do it. No, I'm kidding. No, I you're got right, it, right. Though. This I don't know how to pronounce it. The hell, hellies, hellas. The hellies. Yep. Hellies. German okay. lager. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is this uh, hells, and I was like pretending to be evil, and a German friend messaged me. He's like, you know that means light beer, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, all right, we're just gonna call that enough said. How's that? Close the episode with there. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Damn, that was a fun conversation with Ryan. Uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed talking to him. He he has the energy and passion of a nerd like the three of us do, and that that always shines through in these conversations. Every anytime we have somebody on who's passionate about what they do, a and just like music in general, you could see it, you could feel it. I I, I was all in. That was a blast, right, guys? Absolutely. And like you said, like his depth of the music, obviously being fully immersed in it as an artist. He said he's a scene guy, which is totally understandable the way he uh disp- you know described it and whatnot but just his wealth of knowledge in all aspects of the industry was was pretty cool to, to hear him talk firsthand yeah and like i mean i'm gonna come clean here like i always wonder like are we the weirdos that love music too much but then when you hear like people that create it that are fans too it's like we're in this together like mm-hmm. we love this thing and it re- it's a reminder to never be ashamed or <laughs> you know what i mean like 
you like what you like and we double down on it and to, to know that it's not just the listeners that are in the same boat it's the it's actually the creators he's a music nerd and that's who we love talking to and i'm i'm, I'm stoked we had him on and i'm stoked if he comes back hell yeah i mean to be able to talk to people who are are right up our alley as far as being immersed in the music the the culture of all of it he clearly was from an early age doing the punk in the park things putting on private shows at 14 playing shows with his 30 skate buddies like that's the type of shit that if we were musically inclined the three of us we would have been doing too we just would have been at the show instead right because that's the type of shit that we loved and we were you know yeah exactly we did that too we just did it not on stage we did it from the side being like hey man that's my buddy up there playing bass or playing guitar uh, I'm excited to be here at you know whatever age we were. So to have to have these conversations with these people and and, and Ryan is was perfect as far as that stuff went. I I love it. It's it just it, it like gives me faith in humanity. Just like we were talking about getting back to shows and being out with all these people, be like it's just awesome to have this like minded conversation with people who love the shit that you love and are passionate about the shit that you're passionate about. So this yeah, it was a blast. No, well said. And I think it's because we're all similar age. Us and Ryan grew up in the same scene and everything. So just to just to know that someone like him actually went for it and I mean he's pretty high on these bills, man. You know, is it lot in the life like they're stacked? He's like go, they're going on before nine inch nails. I mean, just imagine that, you know, in our shoes, like unfathomable. Don't miss them. Don't miss them at Ladder Than Life. Get there early. Well, I mean, they're playing late and you can probably show up late and you still get, catch get their middle, get their middle time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's why I brought up the Spotify listeners and like, it's not all about who is the most fans and who sold the most records, but for someone like Ryan, he's got to be so damn proud of like, he has almost a half a million monthly listeners of his band. Like that must be so cool for a band that's been inactive for years. It's just amazing. And it's an example of cream rises to the top. Like people real recognizes real, that whole thing. And it's just cool to, to have him on and, know that there's so many people that listen still listen to them and you know we're stoked on new material well and there's a, there's a reason for them to to get back together because people care and they're obviously they're going to go out and slay it at the uh ladder than life in september and slay it on that uh cruise ship next march amazing that, yep. <laughs> yeah like uh, that salty dog cruise and then the shows in in uh europe i think after that and hopefully who knows man like I'd love to see them. I, I, it's been years and years and years. I'm excited for them to, if things get going and we're opening again, hopefully they can announce the tour down the road. Yeah, get some New, New England dates, or maybe, Nate, we come out and go West Coast. Go to Cali. We can just come hang. The West Coast trip. The 2021 trip is now 2022, I think. <laughs> yeah, it might be. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. TBD. No, but you're right. He definitely personalized you know, humanizes the whole experience because he went for it and, and he's doing it. And it's always cool to hear. And even him running around, like lighting around, like going to grab different nerdy, like you could see the excitement. Like he wanted to go find it. Like, Oh, I got to show you this stuff. That's yeah. like the same level of geek, your nerdiness. It's like, Oh, nice. I'll wait. Yeah. Grab it, man. That's why I was like one record, actually no three records. <laughs> you know? It might, it might be time we have video because that would have been awesome to see on video. <laughs> Oh, He's like, yeah. oh, I can still hear you guys. I got to go over here and grab this. And he like was pulling mm-hmm. stuff out of all these places. Uh, it's yeah. I mean, that's what we do when we're like, Hey man, I think I have that. It's in a box over here. Like I can't wait to take a picture or video and sh- send it to you guys. It's the same, the same vibe. So yeah, I love that shit. You know, it reminds me of like this whole thing. It's like as fans, you want an autograph of your favorite athlete and like you think it's one directional, but then you see that players swap jerseys and sign each other's jerseys at the end. So like, yeah, it's not all just, one direction you know no. and not the band mm-hmm. one direction that's a whole nother episode leave, but uh <laughs> leave harry styles out of this Harry Styles. <laughs> but there's uh to have an appreciation like that on the other side of the house is uh pretty rad and i i want to chop it up with him just talk records next time we have him on he had some cool ones man i mean he showed us a few so i'm excited to do that for sure all right hit us on the socials potty slave podcast uh at gmail.com or at potty slave on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. If you look us up on YouTube, we're Potty Slave or Potty Slave Podcast. You'll find us there. There's all kinds of stuff out there, man. We're, we are impressioning all over the internet. So <laughs> find us. Find us, and it's not that hard. Uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you won't regret it. Follow us on all of them. Hit us, uh, hit us with a like. Hit us with a subscribe. Give us a review on Apple, all, all these places, man. We, we need, we, we'd love to hear from you. 
Yeah. If, yep. if you can't, only. if you can't find us, it's on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we've made it very easy. Yeah. We're spamming everyone. You probably see our we spam email. don't spam emails. anybody, dude. Come on. <laughs> I've, I've never spammed an email to anybody. I kid. I kid. All right. Awesome. Appreciate it. Check us out next week. Thanks for listening. See you next time, guys. Cheers, everyone. Peace, potheads. Da-na-na-na-na. Da-na-na-na. <laughs> Again, <Da-na>. yeah. <laughs>